Yeah, you are on to engineer Sony from Lagos. Today we'll be talking briefly on the internal combustion engine. Internal combustion engine. As the name implies from the slides, you see it's called the acronym is ICE. It stands for I for the internal, C for combustion, and then the E for engine. It's one of the pioneering designs that the scientists in the early 19th century were able to decode that had to do with locomotion in terms of motor, the generators, things that have contributed so much to mankind. Started somehow from somewhere. Some group of scientists thought about it wisely and they came up with a wonderful concept and today is actually benefiting mankind. Now, we look at the outline, first of all, talk about from the slide, you see what they call the automotive engines. Automotive engines. Automotive engines. They talked about, under that column, you have the definition of the word internal combustion engine, or the ICs. Then we talk about the types of the ICs. Then talk about the history and evolution of ICs. Then things you need to know. You know, we talked about the gas turbines. And then what are the alternatives? To the ICs. So that simply means without the ICs, what would have been the other alternatives? They actually what it to stand as an alternative so in case there is misfunction of the integrated circuit, integrated internal combustion engine, the ICs. So before we go there, first of all, know what the word internal combustion engine is. Stands for. Now it's popularly called, probably known as the IC. I stands for the internal, E for combustion, then the E for engine. So said, let us go briefly on that. That before we go into the details, we have to know exactly what it stands for. Now said internal combustion engine, popularly known as the IC's engine, say is a heat engine. Heat engine simply means there's a heat generation which converts the heat energy that is released by the combustion of the fuel inside the engine cylinder. So actually this fuel, fuel can come in form of diesel, form of petrol, form of coal, different kinds of fuels can be defined. Fuels, any substance that can give out energy that has energy latent in it. So, but the heat that is dissipated by this fuel does a great deal in trying to generate movement, a mechanical movement that can create a mechanical work. After the combustion of the release by the combustion of the fuel inside the engine cylinder into mechanical work. Now, it has a versatile advantage. A lot of advantages are uh, accrued to this design, to this concept. Now, there's what's called the high efficiency. If you're talking about that, has a very high efficiency. There's a lightweight, lightweight. So, actually, made of cylinder, made of mostly from metals, light metals, like aluminium. Then the compactiveness, 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 simply means the compactivity of the design. And it's also easy. It's easy, you know, it's easy in starting. You just to roll, generate. The heat generates the movement that would connect your spark plug to the generate the internal heat that will propel or be converted into mechanical work, simply rotating the wheels of the engine. Now it's also have what's called adaptability, able to adapt, then have the comparatively lower cost. It's comparatively lower than any other source because. It has its cost has made it to use as a prime mover universally. It's lower in cost. So we should know those things. We will have those things in mind. We don't know exactly the concept. So on the slide, you have the you have a picture of the automotive engine has looks like and why it works. You have all the parts there, the cylinders, the crankshafts, the compressors, all those types. Those things made up the automotive engine. All engine runs on the same concept. But they either come in different forms, either in two stroke or four stroke, depending on the design. Now, today we also talk about they have different kinds, different kinds 
of the IC engines. You have the reciprocation fuel engine, hydrogen types, the reciprocative engine. Go to the slides. There are some are driven by hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons simply means from, from your normal fuel, diesels, those fossil fuels that runs the engines. Now, these are things. So they have different kinds of ICs. Of I and because the IC, I mean internal combustion engines. You have the components are like piston, you have the reciprocation piston engine that turns. So the components are you have your piston, piston, you also have your cylinder, have your piston pin, connecting rods, crank shaft, crank pin, and crank arm. These are the components are the parts that actually makes up the components that carries that allows the internal combustion of the fuel to actually create mechanical work at the end of the day. We also have the second type, we have the open cycle gas turbine. Open cycle gas turbine. Now, for internal combustion to take place, there has to be some, some, some reactions. It has to be with the fuel, which is the diesel or whichever uh, um, hydrocarbon you're using. It about the air allows oxygen because of combustion. Oxygen allows, supports combustion. And there must be a spark plug that will generate the heat that will enable the fuel to ignite. And in the mixture, we create a continuous burning of the hydrocarbon inside the cylinder. The cylinder, I would call it the That's why it describes as a heat engine. Heat engine. It's a combination, it's a combustion mixture. That has to do with your air, that has to do with the fuel, the self source of the fuel. Could be diesel, could be your petrol, it could also be coal, could be some form of renewable sources. But in the combustion engine, we talked mainly about the non-renewable ones. Non-renewable ones that makes up the combustion engine. So these are some of the parts. You now have the open cycle gas turbine. Gas turbine. So here we have the combustor chamber, that the components. You also have the compressor, and then the turbine. Now you may ask, what what part do they play? What part? What is the relationship between these parts and the three components of combustion? One, you have the, the combustor chamber carries the fuel. That's where the fuel is formed. Then the compressor contains the air, allows air to flow in. And then the turbine is what it actually compacts the, make the burning the heat into mechanical. They will now turn the wheels of the machine itself, whichever we're going to come. IC energy is done by the combustion of the fuel inside the engine cylinder. The cylinder is the house that carries the whole process. That the heating is done directly inside the cylinder. Now, we first ask what is and what is not an IC. So going from the slide, you see, say what is, which means those that are considered as an ticketed, that are considered to possess the internal combustion engine, and those that are not. So now you have the gasoline field re reciprocating piston engine, which is the first one, which is the first step I told you. The gasoline field reciprocating gas a piston engine, which is the first one, which is one of one of the type has it. It's an as it has an internal combustion engine. You also have the diesel fuel reciprocating rod engine. Then you also have the gas turbines. Then you have the rockets. All these types, all these forms of designs has the ICE content. Then that does not have, is that which does not have like your steam power plant, you have the solar plant and the nuclear power plant. These ones are not ICs, they are basically run independently, have an independent design. From this slide, you can see the largest internal combustion engine. This is how the inside looks like inside of the cylinder. What I've explained, we have the compressors, the, the where the air, Cylinder that carries the heating process, compressor that carries the air, and then the final product, which is the turbine that actually rotates the wheel that generates the mechanical work. That's what the pictures you can see on the slide. 
Then for those who are not joining us, we're talking about the IC, which is called the internal combustion engine. Now, we looked about two types, but actually they will be based on one kill, one kill engine. One kill, one kill, spelled W E N K E L. Now, one kill is a German scientist. His full name is called Felix Wankel. There is one kill. Now, he's the first to put the idea into a working design. The first to put into what a an idea into what a working design. You can see on the slide. See the most powerful internal combustion engines that has run the, that runs the rockets that go to space and heavy diesel power engines because of the load, the, the energy dissipated, the work that we're going to do that means the size of the craft. Now, we'll talk about one kill. Through, let's discuss it about one kill. It's very important because it's one of the pioneer in the IC, the internal combustion engine, which is mostly based to search on rotary, rotary. Yes. So he said, he's a German scientist, his name is Felix Wanka. He was the first to put the idea into a working design. Design, because it has to do with rotation. Now, what does it mean here? It means that the heat is converted into a mechanical work. Mechanical work simply means there's a rotation that drives the wheel of the machine which is being operated. Take your generator, your vehicles, your spacecraft, all of them, they have these kind of designs. Now, one kill is very important because it was the first to put the idea into a working world design. Now, one kill perfected you know, the design and he sold the right to several companies, perfected design, long time ago. But the, 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 the force to actually embrace this design was Mazda, Mazda. So Mazda produced the first rotary power car in 1961. Mazda, Mazda, you know Mazda, Mazda Motors. Yes, they produced the first rotary power car in 1961. And then they created their own rotary engine division in 1963. That was a long time. That's about so 50 years ago, 60 years plus, if I'm not mistaken. Now, so it's a long time. So which means the concept has been on for a very long time. It's not something that just started now. Now, the slide you see the smallest internal combustion engine. So the smaller, the, the larger it is, the greater work, mechanical work is going to, going to get, you're going to dissipate. The, the smaller is, the smaller. So it all depends on the design. So I mean, the size of the components. Now, rotary engines were not very full efficient. That, that is, they were not very full efficient compared to your piston engine, which is the truth. So when we say full efficient, simply means the rate of consumption of fuel is not very it's not as efficient as a piston engine, but it's still okay. Now, I said there's a strict emission standard that could not be met with rotary engine. The strict emission standard simply means the emission of carbon. Now, in this generation, we talk about carbon emission consistently. Because it's actually consumed more nuisance to our existence in the universe, in the world we are. Now, I've heard of uh, greenhouse gases, carbon which is CO2 is a major component of, uh, of that greenhouse gas. Now, because of the content emission, the ozone layers, it either they deplete or they become, they become so dense in water. We heard of global warming, global warming, yes, because of the emission of, emission of CO2 into the atmosphere. So they become ticking in the atmosphere, so that when the sun radiations, mostly those poisonous suns are coming, ordinarily, all sun is supposed to be reflected back into space. And very few are traps that will enable the water to keep the warm, the earth warm at a very good temperature. But because of their thickness in the emission, they thicken up the cloud, and at the end of the day, they, they rather they don't reflect so much, but they absorb so much because of the black color in the nature, and then they heat up the world, and then we're having a lot of problems in the world in terms of uh, excessive rain, droughts. Generally, it's consuming more nuisance to mankind's existence, and the world is actually working towards that. You see how this is limited, but it all it's still cheaper because that's why we still have time to discuss about. So even if we use other other sources of energy. Probably in the future, we can see how we can collaborate them with this internal engine, but it may not be true in carbon with other sources. Now, few factors, these two few factors severely hurt the sea and development of rotary engines. What are the two factors? That they, they are not full efficient. And then they also they are the emission, they have the strict, their strict standard emission could not be met because they constantly burn 
carbon, but they actually have their own advantages, their own good parts. Now, what are the, what are the good parts of the, the engine, the rotary engine by Wackel? Say the vibrations is, say, say there is no, there's no, um, there's an unbalance replicating masses, the vibration that is high vibrates when the motion in terms of the generation of the mechanical work that is limited. Then have, have also the powerful weights. Now for similar displacement, rotates, I call it between generally 30% lighter and produce twice as much power. So for, for the vibration, it's okay. Some balance, they have the, the, the powerful weights and then simplicity of its design. These are some of the things that makes it, makes it a bit better than the other. Then, but it has its own fault too, as well as it said, it has uh, the heat, the energy from the field and carbon, from the carbon uh, emission. Carbon emission, the emission of carbon, CO2, because mostly those from the, the fossil fuel, the carbon they mix actually comes to the new stands the world. So whether they are small, they are big, they are relatively have their own emission problems. Now, so for slide now, now you have the history of the two mobiles. You can go to them that in 1859 from the slide, discover how Dick's well, plus in, in the US, it's had a brief history, you can go to them, see. None of these started just today. They have started for a very long time. Then one of these advantages again for the using your the idea of internal combustion engines, so the costs, costs, it's very it's not cost effective. Now say the lack of infrastructures and development for the rotary engine has caused their production and maintenance cost generally to be more. Yes, because I say the lack of infrastructure and development. It is cost intensive, the designs. Very cost intensive, so it does make it so much. The maintenance is also was not very, very okay. Now, I can go back again to discuss that even an IC called the internal combustion engine, where heat energies are converted by the burning of fossil fuels inside the cylinder to generate mechanical work. So, your vehicles, your planes, your rockets were all designed based on that concept. So we need to know. But what I was saying here is that, what I'm trying to explain is that the, they had their own advantages and also, also some disadvantages. Now, the world is turning to green gas. You know that, as I will see, we are trying to convert the use of carbon to other forms of energy. Now, rather than making use of the fossil fuel, you can try also to use some other non renewable uh, renewable sources like your solar, you know, your nuclear, other forms of energy to generate this kind of mechanical work. I think the world is working on that, scientists are working on that directly. But the fact is that the, the renewable source, the non-renewable source is still very much because of the availability of enough fossil fuel. There are deposits in the edge cross, so enormous that mankind for now is still like that. But there'll be a gradual shift, a gradual shift in the use of fossil fuel, which you know. Now let's go back to our class. On the slide, you see the history of the automobiles. You can go through them, the history of automobile engines. So that's a long time ago, not today. You can go through them. Then the history of the automobile engines, you go. Catalytic cracking, then the history is still going. You go through them, you see that mankind for long have been involved in the design, the concept. But the concept generally is talked about the bundle of fuel in a cylinder to generate what form of heat, to generate energy that turns turbines or that can create a mechanical work. So it can be locomotive, can move, form of vehicles, generators, and so on and so forth. Okay? So this is the history, you can go to the slide. Then the things you need to know, now the room temperature and pressure factors for two efficiency, talking about the efficiency of the ICs, yes, about that, you go to the slide, you get those information. These are things you need to know. Then, pollutant before now, I talked about pollutant, the can pull the CO2, which uh, being the byproduct of the fossil fuel. Now, the world is turning green, turning green, so we need to follow suit so that we we'll save mankind and save our world. So our world. It's very important to know the things. Now today we're talking about let's consider the classification of the IC engines. How they classified? How they are classified by one? Their size is very important. Their size, the size. During this slide, you see it's small. Let me scroll back. Talk about 
Let's check your slides. You see most powerful internal combustion engines. You see their large size, and then you have the smallest internal combustion engine. So that I'm trying to say. So what I'm putting is that they are classified by their size. It's very important by their size. What do you mean by size? The ignition system, the stroke per cycle, then the cylinder orientation, the crankshaft control system and casing system. This will talk about the size, size of an IC that being classified by their size, the ignition system, talk about the stroke by circle, we have the two strokes and the four strokes. Then if it's two stroke two and four strokes, you know there are two different designs. Then you have the cylinder orientation, the design of also, and then the crankshaft orientation, and then talk about the control system and the casting system of the cylinder. These are some of some of the classifications, how they are classified. Now I say IC engines are classified to one towards to the nature of the thermodynamic cycles. So the thermodynamic cycle simply means if it's a two-stroke engine or a four-stroke engine or a diesel cylinder engine or a dual combustion cycle engine. They are classified by according to by okay, they said IG engines are classified to the nature of the thermodynamic cycles. Then one said they are the auto cycle engine, they have the diesel cycle engine, and then the dual combustion engine. This is how they are classified. Now we can go further, talk about the types of fuel that is used. You know, before now, when you hear a particular engine. So diesel engine, definitely they know that the fuel using to run that is basically a diesel design. Mm -hmm. They have the petrol engine, which is normally run by simple PMS. Mm -hmm. So we know those ones. Now say types of fuel used. For example, you have the gas fuel. Mm -hmm. The gas fuel, you also have the natural gas. The gas fuel. The pyrolysis, pyrolysis. Then you have the biogas, the non renewable, then the biogas, what? You break down crude. You factor this plant, you get varieties. So one is the crude oil, more of fractional distillation. Then in crude oil, too, you also have the diesel fuel. Now in the fractional distillation, you have different components. You have the PMS, you have the AGU, which is about the, um, the PMS, the DPK, kerosene, and then the AGU, which is called as the diesel fuel. They have the benzene, benzene. Then you have the kerosene, and you have the diesel, the heavy water oil. This is our contained. They are all fraction from. They are all gotten from the what? Fraction distillation process. And each of these components, they are all described. They are all classified as liquid what? Fuels, liquid fuels. Then all gotten from from a, from fossil, which is um, a non-renewable source. Then you now have the renewable fuels, renewable fuels like your sunflower, the seed oil, the alcohol, the bioethanol. These are Classified as liquid fuels. That's what that's what liquid fuels. So let me go back again. Types of fuel used. The first one say is the gas fuel, form of natural gas, form of pyrolysis, called gasification. And then you now have the biogas, the waste gas, and the other. They are all considered as what the gas fuel types. Then on the liquid fuel, we have the crude. So during fractional distillation. They are breaking down into form of diesel, or benzene, kerosene, and other heavy oils. They are classified as liquid fuels. Then you now have the renewable fuels, form of what? Your seed oils, the alcohol, or the bioethanol. They are all renewable source, which is, they have very little effect on the environment. Unlike the first ones, that has effects in terms of the global warming, in terms of Heating up the earth, so which we are trying also to shift away from. But renewable source, they are limited in you know obtaining their presence in the world. But mankind is trying to see how they can make it really abundant so that it can be used on a locomotive. What 
machines to reduce carbon emission. It's very important. Then, um, for now, we're talking about strokes. Talking about the classification of by size, mission system, strokes. Now, the nature of strokes is also part of the classification, part of the IC, part of the the classification by you know by the nature of the strokes. Now, you have the four strokes engine. Have the four stroke engine. You can check the this is turbine from the slides. That kind of ghost turbines. They are all it contains. They all they all contain the internal. Now we'll go back to the slide and solar and the rest, nuclear and the rest. So now what we're talking now is basically on the nature of strokes. Nature of strokes, we okay, have stroke mix. Now we have the four stroke engines, and we have the two stroke engine from the picture on the slide. You can see that the picture, some design, you have the cylinder, you can see the cylinder inside containing the crankshaft, and then the, out, the inlet that allows air to go in. So those three factors combine, you know, they create combustion. The air contains oxygen, but oxygen supports combustion. This packed flow creates the heat that you actually you picked up by the fuel to create an internal burn that actually com converted to mechanical energy. Energy. So now, the nature of strokes, let's go back to strokes. That's really on the slide. Say four stroke premix charge piston engine. Now, say four stroke engine, you have the four stroke, we have the two stroke engine. You say they're all part of the classification by the stroke engine. Let me go back. So, classified by IC engines by size of the engine, talk about the type of fuel that is used. And then I want to talk about the nature of the stroke. So uh, that's how the ICs are being classified. First of all, say the size has to do with the ignition system, the strokes per cycle, cylinder orientation, crankshaft orientation, control system, and cooling system. Now, secondly, we now talked about the types of fuel that is used. Number four is used. Think about the fuel, the gas fuel, in terms of natural gas. Pyrolysis, in terms of gasification, biogas in the renewable source and waste, waste gas. Then the liquid fuel, think about the crude, which is from fractional distillation, crude oil, benzene, kerosene, and so on. And then the renewable ones from like from oil, these ones are classified as, classified as liquid fuels. Look at the fuels that actually burns along with the air influx, the air influx in the system that's been generated by the spark plug. This is a picture from the slide. You see the pictures of the four stroke engines. Now, let's talk briefly on the nature of strokes. Now, we have the four stroke engines and the two stroke engines. Now, the fourth one, we will come back to talk about that a little bit now. We're still talking about how the, the, the ICs are being classified, the ICs are being classified. Then, method of the ignition is it true spark ignition engine, known as the SI engine, or is it compression? Compression, ignition engine, that are the two ways. Because in this case, we're talking about the source of heat. Source of heat. Is it through the spark or ignition engine that will generate the heat or through the compression containing the gas and ignition engine combined together? Then the fifth one, we talk about the nature of cylinder. So it's very important. That's how the ICs are being classified, the nature of the cylinder. So very important. Is it a single cylinder engine or a multi-cylinder engine? Is it a single Cylinder engine or a multi-cylinder engine. Single, just one, multiple cylinders, several cylinders. Then the sixth one is the position of the cylinder. Position of is it horizontal? Is it vertical, vertical or the V engine? Yes, these are the way they are being classified. Let me go over again. Said the classification of ICE engines. That is in terms of the internal combustion engine that being classified by one, the size, two, the type of the fuel that is used, three, the nature of stroke, the four, the method of ignition, five, the nature of the cylinder, six, position of the cylinder. This one's determined. And then the seventh one, uh, the eighth one called, it's called the, that is the, is it? Um, 
And okay, the method of cooling, very important too. The method of cooling, cooling system. Is it air cooled engine or water cooled engine? Is it the cool, is it the air cooled engine? Don't allow air to grow, to go through its clean or you have to apply water to cool the engine. It's also important. And then the air fuel mixing method. The air fuel mixing method. Is it internal or external? It's very important. Let us go again. This is most most intricate part of the design. Now, say classification of ISC's engine, they're classified by size. The goal of again, the size is very important. Then talk about the nature, the nature of thermodynamic circles, nature of it, so to determine the classification. Then the types of the fuel that you use, is it a gas fuel, or is it a, is it a liquid fuel, or is it, is it a renewable fuel, also determine how the engines have been classified. Then the third one talking about the nature of strokes. Is it a four stroke engine? From the data from the slide, you see a four stroke engine. And then let's go further again. Then you see a two stroke engine. So this one determines from the, from the slide, you see a two stroke engine and a four stroke engine. So say nature of strokes. Is it a four stroke engine or is it a two stroke engine? Then the fourth one, the nature of ignition. Is it a spark ignition engine, known as the SI engine, or the compression stroke ignition engine, known as the CI engines? The all these things, this means, the first one means what the classification, very important. Then talk about the nature of cylinder. Is it a single cylinder engine or a multi cylinder engine? It's a part of the classification. And then the position of the cylinder. Is it horizontal, is it vertical, or is it a V engine? We've seen that in some automobiles. We ask for mechanics, is it horizontal, is it vertical, is it a V engine? And then you also have another classification model, the method of cooling. The method of what? Cooling. Now, method of cooling. Now it says, is it air cooled engine or water cooled engine? So that's what the classification. The other one again says the air fuel, air to fuel mix method. Air to fuel mix method is it internal or external. So these are some of the factors that come when you are classifying engines, when you are classifying your ICs. The two, these are two that get involved. So when you know these things, you look like you don't know, you're able to classify your what kind of internal combustion engine is in operation. So we'll fix on the nature of strokes, very important. The other ones are created, you can get them. But the strokes part of the engine is what we're going to talk briefly on. Now, you said, um, before we talk about this, first of all, let's talk about, we define the following terms, induction. Induction, what does it mean by induction? What do you mean by compression? What do you mean by expansion? And what do you mean by exhaust, exhaustion? That's what the, some of the parameters we need to know first before we begin to go further. Talk about difference between the two-stroke engine, what it means by two-stroke engine, and what it means what does it mean when we say four-stroke engine. It's very important. Now it says we have to define the following terms. First of all, the induction. What does it mean? Now piston, which is the driver inside, is moving down. When the piston is moving down, the inlet valve is open. And air or air and fuel mixture flows into the cylinder. That process is called induction. Now, before now, the beginning of the class, I told us that for an engine, for heat, for an internal combustion engine, the internal combustion engine has to do with heat within the cylinder, heat within the cylinder that bond, that fuel bonds. The presence of air. So there are three conditions there. There must be air, there must be fuel, and there must be a heat source. Mm -hmm. When these three are contained, are, are contained in the cylinder simultaneously, then a mechanical work can be generated. Mechanical work can be generated. It's very important. Now it says when an induction takes place, simply means the piston that is moving down, the inlet valve, when the piston is moving down down the cylinder, the inlet valve is open. You can see the picture of the 
two stroke engine you can see the content inside let me expand this bit to the inside you see the fuel intake you see them you see the plug spark plug which is a sort of heat you see the external outlets you see the crown shafts inside you can see them this is a picture this is a two stroke engine model mm -hmm. two stroke Mass set. Now it says induction. First of all, know these words induction. Now, when the piston is moving down, the inlet valve is open to allow in air. So, either the air and the fuel mixture flow, two of them can flow simultaneously into the cylinder. And when this happens, heat is generated. And the heat generated will drive, drive the blade to create a mechanical work. So, there will be motion created. When these three elements are combined, the three elements, the air, the heat, and the fuel, so the three things that can actually generate create the heat, the necessity to, to create the mechanical work. So induction, therefore, simply means when happens when the piston is moving down, as moving down, it's not creating the space for an inlet valve. To be opened to allow air in, and then the fuel mixture created by the fuel content inside will mix up with the air, and the heat generated by the spark plug will actually create heat. So that process, induction process, simply means the piston is moving down, and an inlet valve is open, and air or air and fuel mixture flows into the world, the cylinder. Mm -hmm. Yes, waiting for source of heat to come in. Then second, we talk about compression. These are words, these are things, terms used in the design. Induction, compression, expansion, and exhaustion. Talk about induction. Induction simply means that when the piston is moving down, an inlet valve is open to allow air to go in, to allow the second factor, and then the, the, the air and the fuel, they now flow, the mixture will now flow into the cylinder. Then compression simply means the piston is now moving what up. Understand the difference? The first induction is moving down to allow air to come in. But compression, the piston is moving what up. So both valve and both valves are now closed. <clears throat> are now closed. The, the fluid inside the cylinder is being compressed at a very high pressure we call the TDC. TDC. Mm -hmm. TDC. So the total. <clears throat> now, as so the piston is moving up, then during the compression process, and then both valve are closed. Or the clues are used to the process that the induction process that the piston is moving down and there's an inlet valve that is open to allow air to go in. So the combination of air and fuel mixtures flows into the cylinder. This is the first foot movement. Then the second one, we consider the compression. The piston is now moving up, and then those inlets are closed. They closed the fuel inside the cylinder and are being compressed. Something compressed, they're being compressed. Just a very high temperature. Now, the third one is called expansion. Now, piston is now moving down with valve close. There's an expansion when you compress it. Have a very limited space. And exhaustion is the fourth one. The piston is now moving up, and exhaust valve is open. Now, the gas now flows out. So let me go back again. There are three, four technologies: induction, the compression, the expansion, and exhaustion. Now, in the induction process, it says the piston is moving down, an inlet valve is open, and air or air and fuel fuel mixture flows into the cylinder. You can see the picture on the screen. And then the second one is called compression. Compression simply means the piston is now moving up, then both valves closed. Now, fluid inside the cylinder. Is being compressed. Being compressed. See, one is moving down, line air going. Then the second one simply means the air, 
the, the compression, the, air, the piston will now move up to close the open inlet and then compress the gas and the, the, the fluid already. What are the fluid? The mixture of the air and the, and the fuel will now be compressed. The expansion of the means the piston is now moving down. So both valves are closed in the expansion. In the exhaustion of the means piston is now moving up and exhaust valve exhaust valve is open. So the gas flows out. So mean the waste product that's the core exhaustion. The waste after heat has been generated, that's where it goes off. Those are some of the technology you get to meet in terms of your stroke engines. You can go to the stripe. This is your tree working engine, as I told you earlier before from the slide. You see them, they designed the first design the rotary engines, a German scientist, 1961. Later sold the concept or the design to Mazda. So Mazda was the first to produce that. But one care actually got designed. This is one of the pictures of the one the engine. I call it rotary or the one engine from the slide. You see the pictures there. See what happens, China combustion that goes on. In how to do your piston, your cylinders, the spark plug that actually generates the heat that they actually make about, and then the exhaust where you get the byproduct going off, which was the last four definition I just gave now. Then this is a very good example of the working engine from the slide. See a picture of it there. And then talking about the four stroke engine advantages and disadvantages. So the next topic we'll talk about briefly is on the two stroke engine. And a four stroke engine. It's very important to know these two the comparisons. And four. What would this time? What do you see a four stroke engine? What is this an engine? What does it mean? See a two stroke engine. What does it mean? It's an engine, a two stroke, and it's a four stroke. So it's not it. For those who are just joining us, we're talking about the ICs. IC stands for internal combustion engine. Simply means that heat being converted to mechanical energy. The heat is being generated by fuel that burns inside a cylinder. So actually generates a heat that can rotate the wheels, create rotation, that's why I call you rot rotary engine. Yes, most, en most engines run on that design. You say one kill, who is, who is a German scientist, Actually, worked was the first to work on that idea, and it actually sold the concept to Mazda Motor. So, so between 1961 and 1963, that design has been on. Now, let's talk about the comparison. Want to know what a two-stroke engine is and what a four-stroke? It's very important. To know that. Now, let's look about the four-stroke engine. Now, four-stroke engine generally. That there's a one circle. This one circle is being completed in every two revolution of the crankshaft. Crankshaft is that which actually propels the wheels. That one circle is completed in every two revolution of the crankshaft. That's why you know it's a four diesel engine. But for a two diesel engine, one circle is completed in every revolution of crankshaft. These are the two differences, you know. For a four stroke engine, that one circle is completed in every two revolution. In every two revolution, one circle is completed. That's for a four stroke diesel engine. Then for a two diesel engine, for a two diesel engine, one circle is completed in every revolution of crankshaft. Revolution means the turns. How long does it take to generate the rotation? It's called a rotary engine. So say for a four engine, for a four stroke engine. One circle is completed in every two revolutions. So two tons will make one circle for a four-stroke engine. One for a two-stroke engine. One circle is completed in every revolution. One single revolution drives completed in one circle. That's two differences. Now, how do you compare these two now? How do you know which of them have more advantage than the other? Now let's see. Now, for a four-stroke engine, they, they have a more moving parts. Why you ask me why? Because it completes this revolution, it completes one circle in two revolutions. So it has 
more moving parts to create the motion of the rotary. But for the two-stroke engine, it has less moving parts because it does one circle of rotation in every revolution of the crankshaft. Let me go back again. We said for a four-stroke engine, that one cycle, meaning what it takes the machine to rotate, to turn, to make a complete rotation, takes place every two revolutions of the crankshaft for a four-stroke engine. But for a two-stroke engine, they are completed, one cycle is completed in every resolution of the crankshaft. Hmm? So it's that. Now, we said one of the differences between two now is that the four-stroke engine, more moving parts are involved in the rotary process. More moving parts are involved. But in two-stroke, we have less moving parts. We have the less moving parts. These are some of the comparisons between the two. And then the four-stroke engine is also more, is they had need more maintenance, which is true. You need more maintenance because of the moving parts are so much. So it needs more maintenance to maintain the parts. But the two-stroke engine has what? Less maintenance hmm? because very few parts are involved in the rotation, in the rotary movement. Hmm? Now it says also that the four-stroke engine definitely, since it has more moving parts, there should be heavier in weight. It should be heavy in weight as compared to the two-stroke engine, which is lighter because it has very few or less moving parts. Less moving parts. That's somebody comparing. Then we talk about. The four-stroke engine is also more expensive because it has more parts. The two-stroke engine is less expensive. It's less expensive. Now, one of the comparisons again is that it produces more pollution. The four-stroke engine produces more pollution, but the two-stroke engine produces less pollution. Let's come back and just pick them one by one, so I'll do them in details. They talked about another way that the, that the the engine has a long the, the 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 long the life of the engine has a long life engine in terms of the four stroke, or the short the two stroke has short engine life. Have short engine life. You can see the can see the screw. You can see the designs two stroke engines. These are some of the things you know. Said we can't because many engines use this concept. This is engine comprising of the GM truck engine and gasoline. Power generated, and then the other follows. Mm -hmm. This from the screw. We're still talking about the comparison also. It's about it has a complex design. The four-stroke engine has a complex design, but the two-stroke engine has a simple design. You should know why, because a lot of components involved. So let's go back to, to the comparison again. Before we begin to talk about, before we now begin to talk about the the effects of using ICs run by fields, run by enabled fields, and non renewable fields. That should be the last part of it. Now let's go back and talk about the differences between, or the comparison between, what to compare the two-stroke engine to that of the four-stroke engines. We say, well, the four-stroke engines make one complete, make one cycle completed, that one cycle is completed in every two revolution of the crankshaft. So when the, when the crankshaft rotates twice, then one cycle is what? Completed. So, but the two-stroke engine, one cycle is completed in every. Let's connect. Okay, sorry. Now, one cycle is being completed in every revolution of crankshaft in the two-stroke engine. Secondly, we said that the four-stroke engine has more moving parts as compared to the two-stroke engine that has less moving parts. Please take note of all these differences. Comparison. Thirdly, it says they have more maintenance. Four-stroke engine has more maintenance, while the two-stroke engine has less maintenance. You should know this. Since the four-stroke engine has more moving parts, then you should expect that they will have more maintenance to maintain these various parts that involve in the rotary in the in creating the mechanical work. Yes, very important. Now, because of the many parts, the four-stroke engine also has also heavy weights as compared to the two-stroke engine. They are heavy in weight because of the numerous parts that are involved in the design. Then the two-stroke engine are less what the light in weight because have very few moving parts. They should also know that because of the more parts, moving parts contained in the four-stroke engines, they are more expensive. 
for two stroke is less expensive because in this part. Then, because the four stroke engine makes use of so many parts, so they produce more pollution. They produce more pollution as compared to the two stroke engine. Now, we will base our next topic on that. Then, we talk about the long engine life for a four stroke engine, has a longer engine life as compared to the two stroke engine that has short engine life. Then, the four stroke engine is has a complex design, obviously, if you know that, because of the many parts that are involved in design. And that of the, the two stroke engine has a simple design simple design now let me do a recap before we now go to talk about the pollution in terms of pollution of pollution it's very important we need to talk about that because presently the world is turning green we try to look for alternatives we look for alternatives now if you watch the slide you see alternatives let me scroll back and you see them called alternatives to ICs. What as I scroll, get to know, see them. Now look at the alternatives from the screw. You see, you see electric vehicle, you see alternative one, the external combustion, alternatives. Then two, you see the electric vehicles, the alternatives to the ICs engine. You also have the hydrogen fuel cell, which is alternative three. They have the hydrogen, how do you store the hydrogen? Then you have the 25, they can go to talk more. Very important, pollution, pollution. Now the world is turning green because we can observe see the air getting heated up, you see flooding in part of the world, you see rain not falling at the right time, you see sun's heating of the of the of the of the of the earth itself, telling constant modules and to man. A lot of illnesses, a lot of things happening that make making the world uninhabitable for man. So the ICs, which is internal combustion engines, runs on fuels generally, fossil fuels, whose byproducts are mainly carbon, carbon fossil to carbon four oxides. And what is trying to reduce that emission affects the generators, the vehicles, the engines, the rockets, the run of fossil fuels. But the world is trying to move gradually away from that source of energy. But it's important we also to talk about the ICs. That's why we have time to talk about the IC height works, at least the pioneering of locomotive engines. But in as much that is still very important, you see, scientists around the world still trying to look for alternatives, which I've highlighted here on, on the slide. You see a nuclear. See your electrical, solar vehicles, see your hydrogen fuel cells, see your electric vehicles, and then you have what they call the external combustion. Mm -hmm. Now, these are some alternatives to that. But here we'll talk briefly on some. We have the solar vehicle, very important, solar is regularly available for us. And there are also some other sources of energy. Like geothermal, biomass, all these forms of energy can also what help mankind. Help mankind. It's very important to know those things. Now, the world is turning green. Everything we talk about global warming, what the as I say is so heated up because of the constant emission of CO2. From burning fossil fuel and vehicle factories, industries that run on IC internal combustion engines, heavy duty machines that run on fossil fuels, either PMS or the diesel diesel engine. Let's classify that diesel engines now. Now, it's man's responsibility to <laughs> from this source of energy, look for other sources that can replace them. Very timely because if we don't do that, earthquakes, floodings, desertifications, and so on. 
So you really know for like the normal time, heat come excess in part of the world and the other. And it's because of illnesses, mankind. That there seems some controversy theory about the COVID, but uh, if it's not from the, from the global warming, probably generated by excessive emission of sun radiation. Could be possible, or such is still ongoing. Now, the alternative sources we are saying is that we will reduce the use of carbon for the CO2. Because it works on the design of ICs, it has to do with fuel burning inside the cylinder, which means the byproduct and have exhaust part of it, which actually releases the byproduct form of CO2. And what is the industrialization of the world is going so fast that countries like China, the US, the European countries are constantly looking for ways of enriching themselves by burning more of this. Like even the platform for uh, to reduce carbon emission has been a problem. Because America, during the Trump era, completely removed, went out of the, the agreements, the Paris Agreement. But thank for Biden, the new president, who's also trying to renegotiate coming back. But in reality, they are they actually doing that. The answer is no. They are all for political reasons. actually working and do research to actually cause our world causing most of use of solar and being one of the alternatives has been on for some time from this from the slide you can see the solar driven vehicle yes it's been designed now this solar driven vehicle works directly with the source energy source energy being trapped by some system on the, on the vehicle that actually converts the heat energy. So like one that converted the one that happened in the IC made into locomotive uh, forms. I would try to, the heat is not, from the solar vehicle, you don't have to need, you don't need to burn the fuel with by the CO2, but it's so natural and so inside the available. But the question is that, from the question, you see a question asked, they say, do we, do you want to drive this car? Every day, but never at night. That's some of the limitations that they can only be used more effectively during the day when you have enough sun radiation. But I believe with time, time to be able to work out these things so that they be aware of them and make use of them during the night, which is already in progress. So enough of them the day where you have excessive light, and then during the night can be what is affecting me. And we won't do that. We are having to preserve. Then the most vibrant sector is in the electrical vehicle. Yes, a lot of companies have been working on that for long. And uh, we know it's not easy, you know. But it remains the most available source. But because of the What they are consuming. So, what alternatives you have the electric vehicles, the EV sector, where you need to burn down, break down some, um, some uh, reductive materials like uranium that have so much latent when they decay. They have 